Welcome to lesson on 9.3, Solving Rational Equations. We'll start by solving rational equation graphically. Let us say that we're given x over x plus 2 is equal to 1. Uh, one of the things you could do is, uh, on your graphing calculator, um, set y1 equal to this on the left-hand side, and then set y2 equal to negative 1. But before you do that, one of the things you notice right away is that because we have a fraction over here, that if you look at the denominator, the x cannot be negative 2, because if it is, the denominator will be 0, and that will give you undefined value. So we always start with whenever you have an irrational expression, uh, you need to find out what the excluded values are. Now going moving on to step 2, we need to graph the left-hand side, which is x over x plus 2. And we'll do this by hand. So uh, in order to do that, if you do a long division, you could clearly see that it's a transformation of 1 over x with a vertical shift by 1 and horizontal shift to left by negative 2. And there's a vertical stretch by 2. And because it's negative, it's uh, reflected vertically, right? And then we also have to graph the right-hand side. Uh, set that y is equal to negative 1. Once you do that, the one in red on the left-hand side looks like this, and denoting the vertical and horizontal asymptote, that's what we see. And then when you set y equal to negative 1, and see this right here, guys, the blue, where does the blue curve and the red curve uh, intersect? It's right here, isn't it? Right, so we state that the x, the coordinate over here is negative 1 and negative 1, but you're looking at the equation, we're looking for x value, right? So therefore we say that, uh, that equation is true if x is negative 1. Now, if the answer turns out to be one of the vertical asymptotes, you say there's no solution, right? But, uh, because it is not, we are pretty certain that answer is negative 1. Moving on to the same exact question, let's do it algebraically, okay? Uh, expressing the right-hand side as negative 1 over 1, that gives us a fraction, is equal to a fraction. We call that proportions, right? In those things, we could cross-multiply, and when we do simplify all that, x turns out to be negative 1. So the algebraic and geometric approach gave us the uh, same answer. Let's continue with something more realistic. Uh, these are the kind of problems that we'll be dealing with in our textbook. So before we start, uh, let's examine the lower uh, denominator. And if you have to factor that, we recognize that that's x minus 7, x minus 3. And whenever we have a fractional, rational uh, expression, we want to know its common denominator. And with that value, uh, which is uh, x minus 7, x minus 3, we want to multiply to both sides of the equation. And the question is, why? Well, let's expand the uh, x minus 7, x minus 3 to both terms. When you do that, what you notice is that you could cross-cancel, right? That x minus 7 over here, x minus 3 over here. On this term, only the x minus 7, so that gives you x minus x times 6, x minus 3. And the right-hand side, x minus 3 cancels out, right? And then when you're left with this, we expand everything and we combine everything, which yields this quadratic equation. And then if it's factorable, go ahead. If not, use quadratic formula. In this particular case, it is factorable, so my answer is 3 and 8. But before we get started, we should have made a note of the excluded value, which is 3 and 7. So we know that answer cannot be 3. We cross that out, and therefore, answer is 8. Okay? All right, guys. We have one more over here that you could we could do in class. So uh, if you want to think about it and try it at home, go right ahead. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, the word problem, the real world problem with rational equation. Lei Osuka is swimming in a river. She travels three miles up and down the stream in total of four hours. In still water, she could travel at average speed of two miles per hour. What is the average speed of the current, uh, river's current? Because this is a distance formula, a uh, distance equ uh, question, we need to use a distance formula. And then I think the key here will be time, and time is distance divided by rate. All right, guys, just keep that in the back of our minds, and let's move on with the question. And what is the reverse current? So let C be the speed of the current, 
and we need to fill this out this table out guys okay we the distance up stream and downstream are both yeah that's right they're both three and they gave us the rate didn't they now uh, think carefully about this she swims two miles per hour when she's going down she's going faster or slower that's right it goes faster right uh, by adding the speed of the current so her speed going down is two plus c going up is going slower by the speed of the current so it's two minus c and we had as we mentioned the time is distance divided by rate and then so the time will be three divided by two minus c and time going down will be three plus sorry three divided by two plus c now the one information here that we still have not used is the fact that she is going to be in the water for four hours right so total time is four hours going up and down are both added to four hours so going up is three divided by two minus c going down is three divided by two plus c and when you plug in the values here we are left with rational equation just like before so we deal it with the same way that we have in the past all right guys uh let's finish this up in class uh so uh that's it for tonight okay have a good night